So here is how it will work. I will be naming the airline company that I am personally familiar with and tell you the pros and cons of working in there from the perspective of an employee. And by the end of this video, I will tell you my opinion, keyword opinion of which airline is best to work for, for you as the employee, again, as the cabin crew, and my final advice in choosing which airline to apply for. All right. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Ruth and I help aspirants simplify the complicated cabin crew interviews. I make weekly videos on flight attendant interview tips. And if you are a new or a fresh graduate researching this topic right now or currently employed, and looking for a way to shift your career from your current career into a flying career, well, you have clicked on the right video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel to get my weekly tips here on YouTube, on the podcast, and the videos on Facebook. With all that said, let's get started with the video. So let's go ahead and name the first airline that we will roast today. The first airline that I want to talk about is Qatar Airways. They do have lots of pros and lots of cons. But is it worth it to work with them or to work for them? We will answer that by the end of the video. For now, the pros that I could tell you if you are interested in working for Qatar Airways is that they have the amazing, they have amazing dream destinations. They have almost everything. So what is the purpose of working in an airline with lots of destinations? The purpose of this is that one, you will be able to visit the country and stay there. If you are working, You, it's called a layover. That's where you stay there. For example, you can go to Europe, stay for three days, and your flight back will be going back after three days. So the whole time that you are in Europe, you are being paid per day. You are given an accommodation, usually a five-star hotel <laughs> accommodation. And all you have to do while you're waiting for your next flight back is you can eat, you can sightsee, you could tour the city, you could shop, you could be with your families and friends if they're there. So that is a pretty sweet deal, guys. And Qatar Airways have lots of these destinations to choose from. So what if your airline doesn't fly to a specific place that you want to go to? You can still go there, but during your off days, right? During your off days, you could use an airline, you know, that they are collabing with, an airline ticket. You can get a discounted rate because you're a crew and you could try to go there. Uh, get a chance to go there by, you know, uh, lining up in this queue and they will say if there is a vacant seat, you can go. But if it's a full flight, you have to wait for the next flight. That's how it is. So that is the purpose of why we are rating the airline per destination because if it is already in the roster, I mean, it's already in the places that you go anyways, you don't have to wait for your day off to visit a certain place. So you could only just imagine the possibilities like Qataris goes to Maldives. They go to almost everywhere that you could think of in the world. So yeah, destinations, mm, 10 over 10. The salary is really good. So the salary compared to other airlines is good. The accommodations for a crew pretty decent guys there's nothing else actually there's nothing else you could ask for when i started flying and i started living in my accommodation in the middle east it's like oh my god this is the best place i've ever lived in <laughs> like i have a whole room to myself i share a flat with a couple sometimes just one other flatmate or sometimes there's two and you just want more people if you're working in the middle east to stay with you that's the thing i just for me my personal um, experience I like it when there's other people in the house so I wouldn't feel so lonely because of course I'm not with my family right so yeah accommodation is really good 
Qatar is an open city. It's not like Saudi Arabia where you have to wear the Muslim clothes. It's called abaya. And you have to strictly do the dress code everywhere you go. But in Qatar, you can wear freely anything you want, you like. As long as, of course, you're not showing your shoulders and your knees. In any open city, that's the thing. I think except for Dubai. But they're not so strict with their accommodations. Because... Living in the Middle East, I have experienced wherein some malls will not let you go inside because you're wearing short shorts or you're wearing a tank top. So you're supposed to cover them your sh- just to respect the culture and things like that. And also, they're trying to avoid um, commotion because, you know, people are not used to that. So you might get in trouble if you're a girl, you know, you might get in the wrong side of the mall and somebody attacks you something like that it's just for your safety as well so enough said qatar i think it's an open city and it has lots of modern and entertainment restaurant places to go guys it is like one of the top notch cities that you could entertain yourself all right and the next thing about uh, Qatar Airways that I like is their fast career growth. It's a solid company to work for. It will never go bankrupt because I think the government is still a part of the company. And their level of training is not so bad. All right. If you study, you could pass it. So again, the pros for Qatar Airways is their destinations, salary, accommodation. The city itself, Qatar, is an amazing city full of different entertainment and uh, lots of things to do. You have fast career growth in Qatar Airways, especially if you're a previous cabin crew. You could easily become a purser. They have this program where you could grow your career with them Um it's, it's actually really fast because I know personal friends who become purser just after a year. And then they have a solid reputation. I think solid, you know, company. It's not going to go bankrupt on you and things like that. And it has a really good uh, training. You know, it's not so bad for the cabin crew. It's not like super 90% passing, not like that. So maybe 85, I'm not so sure, the latest. But I mean... For your case, if you are the cabin crew, it's a good thing, all right? It's a good thing for you. The cons that I want to mention here is the culture. I do have mixed review about this. So go on, do your own research about the Qatar Airways culture because this is actually normal for a big company. Sometimes lots of things are going on. Have you heard of Korean Air or something like that? So do your own judgment if you think that you could you know, go with that. But I also have reviews where they're like, okay, and actually they like the culture. So do your own research, my loves. And then another con that I would like to state is that Qatar, though it is a very modern and uh, entertaining city, it is actually very expensive. (laughs) It's very expensive to live in Qatar. That's the comment that I get from my friends who are still working in Qatar up to today. Actually, we just chatted last night. So she commented that everything is expensive and she wants to go back to Oman as soon as possible. <laughs> so yeah, that is Qatar City for you, another con. And also fast turnover of the employee. If you have noticed, Qatar Airways is always hiring because they always... Um, you know, they have certain, going to the next con, rules. They are rule-centered. They have certain rules that is black and white. And if you can't follow those rules, then you'll be (laughs) bye-bye. So that's what it means for fast turnover. It's a con for you because uh, there are like so many, I don't know how many chances you get if you make a mistake. But yeah. The next thing is because they are they have this reputation as a five star airline to upkeep. Of course, they'll be more strict. They'll be more uh, rules centered. In turn, after that, uh, 
what happens then is you become a very stressed flight attendant if you're not used to working in this space or if you can't cope it could be something that is a high level of stress for you because uh, some airlines they're just lax they don't have this reputation to uphold and things like that so if it just comes with the territory you are working with a really you know high-end airline so you have to keep up with the brand and uh, just go with it so probably you will be stressed i'm just assuming here but yeah <laughs> that's a con and the last but not least is a very traditional company i have first-hand experience about this uh, you're not allowed to actually post your picture in a uniform we do see it a lot online a lot of people are posting with their pictures and their uniforms but if you look at the contract it's actually not allowed to show yourself in social media because it's something about the airlines trying to keep the privilege to see you only in person but if your picture is like plastered all over the social media they're like okay nothing new here so they want to keep that mystery about the flight attendant uh, image and they wanted to only have official photos to be posted and uh, things like that you know going back to the upkeeping the level of standard that they are holding on to so now this is just the first airline and we're already 15 minutes down the clock <laughs> Do you think um, talking about Qatar Airways and all that they have to offer and all the cons that you have to deal with, do you think it will be worth it to work for them? Well, tune in till the end because I will give you the tea on that. By the way, I have a playlist of videos about the latest Qatar Airways recruitment processes and tips it will be on the link i will link the playlist and also the latest video about that is the latest qatar recruitment qatar airways recruitment process that happened this year last may and finally my friend has flown to qatar last night so she's there she is sharing with us what happened with her recruitment last May and some tips if you are interested in getting hired as well like her. All right, so that's my Qatar Airways pros and cons. Now let's try to keep this video upbeat. I know I talk a little bit slow, but I want to make sure that we cover everything before I go on and give you like... A shortcut version so now let's try to move this along the next airline i want to talk about is emirates the pros are destinations salary accommodations and dubai is the best city guys for shopping i just love shopping in dubai super cheap like all these brands like crocs like they're like 90 percent off during dubai sale dubai day sale they have that holiday that everybody's just on sale so i love dubai because of the shopping and because i have a friend who lives there i usually spend christmas and new year's there with her and her family so yeah i miss dubai it's a shopping haven <laughs> and there's lots of good restaurants modern entertainment and so many things to do in the city and guys this is the best part of working with emirates they are open to social media influencers so if you post about yourself getting ready for your work you will not get in trouble like i did <laughs> you will not get called for the uh, for the office <laughs> if you posted anything to social media as long as you're keeping up with the standards of the image of the company they said uh, it will be all right and they even have official ambassadors that is actually representing the company so that means you are an official vlogger for emirates if you are one of those cabin crew that they you know tap or something oh my god that is just amazing for me can you imagine when i started this video or this this youtube video channel 
I have to use my fake name, Miss K. Chris, because I'm so scared of getting found out and, you know, um, getting in trouble. So that is why it was hard for me to vlog while I was still a cabin crew because eventually they will ask you to take down everything, to take down your videos. That's what happens in tra uh, traditional companies, right? Even in the Philippines for PAL. So here we go. Emirates, they're cool. They're so cool because of this. That's why I love them. And then another perk or another pros is that they have lots of perks. They have this little tiny card that my friend said, you just show it to the hotel, show it to the restaurant. You immediately have a discount because you're no, you're like a level three employee for Emirates or level four employee. You do have free stuff all the time. Mm, it's amazing. <laughs> And as well as the training for new hires, I would say 1 to 10, it will be a level 8. So here we go. Those are the pros. And now the cons. I do have a friend who worked for Emirates, but she's not a cabin crew. She is a, a spa assistant. So she wears the same uniform, but she's not actually a cabin crew. She's just in charge of the spa in the first class of the Emirates can you imagine Emirates uh, airplane okay so they do have this spa for their VVIP passengers and their work is to assist in that and sometimes assist the cabin crew so the problem is that she's been working there for a long time and it's so hard to get promoted to cabin crew so one of the cons I would say is that a slow growth career, of course, once you're a cabin crew, probably there is a program for you. But if you're stuck in the spa system position, it's so hard to cross over because you have to get the, you have to get the approval of the head of the whole department to be able to even to be able to apply and even have a chance. So she actually just didn't cross over. So that's one of the cons that I would say in, you know, practical sense. But on paper, they're good. But yeah, this is from personal experience of the people that I know in my life, in actual life. So yeah, that's why I'm sharing with you. All right, next airline is Etihad. Their pros are they do have solid destinations as well high salary, great accommodations. Abu Dhabi is not like Dubai or Qatar. It's a little bit more quiet as a city. They do have Ferrari land there, something like a Ferrari uh, theme park, but I'm not so sure. I think it, I would say they would have moderate entertainment in the city and it's a solid company to work for. They do have lots of perks and cabin crew discount as well. And the level of difficulty of training is level eight. Almost like the same as Emirates. They are really, uh, they are, a, how do I say this? They're not so stressed to work for. <laughs> but still, of course, they have rules in place. And there are things that you have to follow. Uh, standard, you know, the standard level of it, not the OA, <laughs> not the overacting um, stress levels of following them, but you know, a little bit more reasonable. <laughs> My baby's crying. <laughs> All right. The cons is that I can't really think of a con for Etihad. I do love their uniforms, but I could only imagine how hard it is to get ready for that uniform. It is the epitome of what we call in the Philippines, ti is ganda. <laughs> you know, when you want to wear the high heels, you know it's going to hurt, but you still wear it, all right? So because of this beautiful uniform, I think it's a con because on a daily basis, you have to put it together. There's like so many complexities involved, but probably you'll get used to it. That's the only con that I could think about, about Etihad. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> if you have reached this part of the video, we have covered three airlines so far. Stick until the end and I will share with you my final recommendation which airline is best to work for in my own humble opinion. 
And if my content has been helpful to you for your cabin crew journey, please let me know by liking this video or leaving a review if you are listening over the podcast or the Facebook page. That really helps me a lot and it enables me to make more free videos on this channel. Okay, let's move on to my favorite domestic airlines. Let's talk about PAL or the Philippine Airlines, the flag carrier of my country. Their pros is the destination, mm, good destinations. They fly to USA, Europe, I think they have Europe flights, and uh, Sydney, Australia, lots of Australian flights. So, A really good pro for working in PAL is that you do have the comforts of your own home. You don't have to leave the Philippines if you are a Filipina, Filipino watching this video. In my channel, mm, this is like the perfect combination you get to be with your mom your parents your family your love life but then you get to travel as well you have that opportunity to travel so this is amazing and it's like the prestige is right over there guys it's the top if you are from the philippines and then if you are a pal cabin crew ibaka you know you're not like anyone else you're not common folk <laughs> we look up to you like that <laughs> yeah and let's move on i'm getting carried away again the salary is really good and of course pal have beautiful uniform you know the scarf it is epic i mean it's an icon it's iconic <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm just being a fan girl here, but really, pal, amazing. They do have great passengers as well. In my experience, the really rich people they usually fly pal because they don't want the hassle of getting a Cessna, and where a tropical country is safer to fly with a big airline than a private jet. <laughs> so. You would usually see them flying this airline. And yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> you will see the difference really for, and also a lot of artists and a lot of actresses, actors, they fly PAL as well. If they have like a big event, you'll probably see your whole basketball team in this airline. <laughs> so there's lots of opportunities to meet and greet amazing passengers. And last but not the least, career longevity. There is this um, saying about working for PAL. Once you work for PAL, you die there because it's just that good. You don't want to look for anywhere else to work for because you're taken care of. Everything is good. All right? All right, let's go to the con. One con that I would definitely make note of is the seniority. If you are from the Philippines, you are familiar with this. But if not, it's basically the culture of how people treat you. So there is this like pecking order to things. So when you are working for PAL, you will probably be stressed because of your workmates or your superiors. Because if you don't say good morning to them, even if just one bit you forgot to greet them you should be the first one to greet them and say hi good morning i'm flying with you today uh something like that you will be considered rude and you will be bullied till the end of times <laughs> I'm not kidding so that's what we call seniority it's really prevalent in the pal culture but it's okay we'll talk about it till the end i'll give you the verdict of if it is is it worth it to work for PAL? The next airline we're going to talk about is Cebu Pacific. So the pros is you have lots of perks working for Cebu Pacific. They recently implemented a family day for their employees. So they're like really looking after your whole self as the employee employee so they do have lots of programs you know for 
the employees to keep them happy. If you have perfect attendance, you would win a rice allowance, right? I think that was implemented way before, but I'm not so sure if it's still going on right now. But that's a good, good way to motivate your employees. Um, and it's a good thing to have if you're working for that company. There's like lots of things to go for. You can uh, achieve different goals because they do have lots of programs for you. So you really feel that you are being taken care of. They do have lots of income potential as well on top of your basic salary because they do sales in flight. So you do have commission in flight. So that's really good. That's one of the perks of working for a low-cost airline because you have less work because it's not a traditional airline that everybody gets a free food right now if they want food they have to pay for it and that means less work for you and more money for you if more people wanted to buy your things all right i'm sorry we have lost our battery it died but as i was saying another pro for working for Cebu Pacific is the passengers. There's no adjustment period to working with someone in a different culture. Like for example, if you start working for the Middle East, you have to adjust to how things are for Muslims. Like for example, they can't sit together if they're not husband and wife. So there's a headache for you as the cabin crew because you have to find a seat for the ladies and another seat for for the men and then you know what it's just a headache so if you're working with people in your same culture it's so much easier this also goes for pal as well right so that's a call a pro i think that's a pro because there's no adjustment period it's so easy to deal with the passengers like they could easily understand you and filipinos are one of the best passengers in the whole wide world to have guys because we don't smell we are very clean, we are very polite, and we are really, really cultured. So, guys, we are the best. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Anyways, so that is for Cebu Pacific, the pros. Again, uh, passengers, lots of perks for the cabin crew. They have income potential from sales, additional income potential. All right. The cons is that for me personally, I think I don't like the destinations. There is not much of a layover, probably in Korea, um, Sydney, Australia, but that's it. Nothing compared to PAL or if you are an international airline. I did fly domestic for the first three years of my career. It's good and well. I can go on my days off. But you know what? I still feel like I wanted to have a flight where there is a layover and I wanted to go to Europe. So... This is something that you cannot get from Cebu Pacific. And another con I would say is the uniform. I love it. It's nice, but I'm not in love with it. You know what I mean? I love it, but I'm not in love with it. <laughs> it's just it's just not my thing. Uh, I like classy stuff. I don't know. I just like traditional probably more. It's more of my taste, but I can't do modern. Even though my first airline, we are wearing shorts and polo shirts. <laughs> I've been there and guys probably I would prefer a more like I don't know I prefer a really nice uniform <laughs> because I've tried um, working for the same you know level but <laughs> it was it was okay it was comfort over you know fashion but so it's a con for me Next airline, last airline, guys, that we are going to talk about is Air Asia. The pros are, yeah, you have good, good and great passengers coming and flying with this airline. It is so fun. Their culture is fun, enjoyable. You know, it's like the Virgin Airlines of, of Asia. So for me, Air Asia is like so out of the opposite of the traditional where you could wear your hair down there's lots of you know lots of things going on that is just not available for the traditional airlines and also you sell 
uh they do have good uniforms guys <laughs> i like their uniform it's all red it's like it's it's a fun but glamorous at the same time still a touch of classy because it's a tailor suit yeah and it's in red and you know oh my god nobody can mistake it for anything else if you're walking down the street with this so yeah it's really good i think their destinations are okay because they do have a lot of malaysian flights singapore uh, hong kong i mean when it comes to destination they still don't have layovers but i guess there'll be like more long haul flights than then you know because if you're a flight attendant and your flights are only 30 minutes long it's more work for you than compared if your flights are two to three hours per flight there's more time for you to rest for fast turnaround flights you're stressed you are time constricted and there's a lot of passengers that come and go come and go come and go and lots of things could happen so i'd prefer having flights that are like at least an hour long so i could sit down i will not have varicose veins by the end of the day so things like that so i really like air asia's destinations because mostly they're like inter-asian so outside the country but not too far so i wouldn't be doing like super like six legs that just means six flights in a day so that means six times you have to do all the security check, all the boarding. <laughs> uh, it's just, it gets, it gets crazy sometimes. So as a cabin crew, I would advise you or I would tell you that because if you're aspiring, you don't know about all these things, you know, you only learn about this afterwards. So if you are a cabin crew and your flights are like six flights in a day that's stressed but if your flight's just two flights in a day that's chill <laughs> so that's one of the best conditions to work for take note of that <laughs> so yeah that's why i think uh, air asia's destinations are okay they are not all local they still have like more original flights going on yeah you have your hair down things like that Mm, the salary is good as well i've heard from the grapevine <laughs> that when they started air asia x here in metro manila in the philippines lots of people suddenly started having cars you know having houses is their air asia cabin crew so they really give good salary to their cabin crew yes <laughs> the con that i would say probably not much but something that you can't avoid is because they structured their pay in such a way that is not it's usually done in the philippines to avoid tax they structure it straightforward this is your pay so the government have lots of tax that they could get because they just put the salary in one thing usually in the philippines they, we put our salary in different things so we have the basic salary that's the taxable salary then we have allowances perks bonuses those are tax free so by the end of the day the employee or the cabin crew will get hopefully more you know that's the idea but since Air Asia X is a Malaysian based company who's operating in the Philippines, probably they don't know about these things or they don't want to do all that things that we Filipinos do. We're really good at it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? And they just put it there in the basic salary. So now Uncle Sam has a chance to get most. Uh, you are like put in a higher tax bracket. You have more percentage to pay to taxes things like that but it's also good because this way you can get that car you know you can get that uh, down payment for your home i mean there's more opportunities for you to do loans um yeah i but i think if i really calculate it to the last cent it's still okay air asia if you compare it to traditional filipino company that will give your salary in like seven ways by the end of the day you still earn more in air asia that's what i think because you have more flights 
more flying hours. Uh, even though, yeah, you're taxed, but your take-home pay almost the same or more. And then you have the additional perk of using that pay slip to fund a business, buy your car, you know, you'll have the credibility for the creditors to give you, you know, whatever it is that you want to get that you can't get if you have a low salary on your basic pay. Lots of math. You didn't expect that, right? <laughs> and you guess it right as well. I have a video sharing my Air Asia application experience and tips. I will link that below for you to check out. It's still relevant because they still do their hiring this way nowadays. So check it out. Put it in the links or in the cards here for you. Now, before I say which airline is the best to work for, let me answer the question first of is it worth it to work for Qatar Airways and PAL given the many cons that I have mentioned in this video? First things first, Qatar. Is it worth it despite the many cons and the many bad rumors that I hear about the company? The answer will actually depend on your goals and your personality. If it is checked, if your goal is checking off as many countries to visit as long as you can while you're still single and and you know no responsibilities in life <laughs> this is the best place to do it <laughs> because you will get from the destinations alone you will get access to a lot of places all right and also if you're goal is to earn lots of money while you're still young and um, starting your career you don't mind you know if you prioritize that over having a chill life or having a chillax vibe in life <laughs> this is the best place to do it because you know what you will prioritize your goals and dreams you wouldn't mind the many rules and protocols that you have to deal with when working with Qatar. So for me, and also the culture, when, when we talk about culture, the seniority thing, the reporting thing that's going on in Qatar Airways, you know what? You will learn to deal with it because I've learned to deal with it. Seniority will be present wherever you go, whichever airline you go with. So better yet, deal with it with the best possible pros on your side than to deal with seniority anyways, but then you don't get the other perks like the destinations and the money, right? The only way to deal with seniority is that just think that you will not fly with them ever again <laughs> because that's the good thing about being a cabin crew. You don't work in an office that you're stuck with your coworkers every day. You have different coworkers every flight, so you don't have to deal with them until another day or another flight in a month time. You probably just deal with a difficult coworker two to three times a month. That's it. <laughs> all right so yeah and also one big thing if you are gonna be working for qatar you should not be an alcoholic be you should not be you should be over your party days and all of those uh happy happy life because you know their rules will not be so nice to you they do have lots of curfews and it's not allowed to smoke and Alcohol is not allowed in the Middle East, so <laughs> you can still have alcohol on your layovers and in your home, but yeah, it's not it's not a party scene airline, guys. So that's my two cents about it. Again, Qatar was yes, if you have a diff you don't have the party animal personality, yes, you can do it. If you're just like more mellow and introvert, you just wanna travel and have money. Yeah, this is a company. You can do it. You can work it, girl. Even the culture, you can do it. Yeah, you can do it, guys. <laughs> Depends on how bad you want your goals to be met. And is it worth working for, pal? 100% yes. Because you have the comforts of home, the pride as a flag carrier cabin crew, high salary, dream destinations, and perks, which means you could get your family, let them travel with you 
Oh my God, from the perks alone. is worth it already because you can have your family with you traveling. So, um... Uh, And they, yeah, like I mentioned before, PAL have a reputation that once you are employed, you stay there forever. <laughs> That's why you see a lot of old people in PAL. Hi, PAL. I love you guys. So I'm not trying to cause drama. This is just the reality. And once you experience working with them, you probably, you know, dealing with the seniority, just like the way you deal with the seniority in Qatar Airways, you don't have to... fly with that person all the time if that person is really a bully then just deal with the time that you are flying together and leave it there in the airplane you don't take you don't have to take your work home so it's doable guys it's really worth it with the benefits that you get for working in this company so it really depends again on your goal on which airline you wanted to go for And yeah, those are the pros and cons. I hope that I was able to give you some insight on what to do, how to decide which airline to choose. Yeah, and not be so rushed like I was. <laughs> All right. In the comments, please share in your opinion what is the best airline to work for. Let me know. I'm curious. And now we have reached the most awaited part of this video. Finally, we're gonna answer the question, which airline is, in my opinion, the best to work for? And for me, this airline is the best because it has dream destinations, high salary, employee perks, the best accommodations, the best employee, you know, uh, everything that you could ask for insurance discounts spa discounts dermatologists <laughs> things like that entertainment the place a city to live a, a great city to live in uh, and also i have personal friends there so that's why i'm a little bit biased but even if i don't have friends i could easily make friends and the cherry on top is that I can vlog and post about my experience as a cabin crew with this airline. So you already know. You already know what airline I'm talking about. And they are actually like this even before the dawn of social media. They have already been uh, so encouraging to their cabin crew. Yeah. So for me, this is... Dan, dan, da, da. <laughs> The airline that I'm referring to is the Emirates Airlines. They're the best, I could say. I mean, my own airline, when I was in the Middle East, of course, is the best. The only one missing element that I wished I had while I was working there is that I wished I had more freedom to vlog. I had more freedom on social media. And... All the rest, I have it. destinations, I have good friends there, and high salary, accommodations, and a quiet city is a much more fit for me. I didn't include my own company out of respect, and that's open air. But if I was allowed to vlog, it will be my number one choice. But I wasn't. I actually got into hot waters doing vlogging there. They found out after all the layers of protection that I have put on. <laughs> my channel and blog so yeah that's the thing so for me number one is emirates because of that and number two is my own airline oman air so if only i was allowed to vlog i would choose oman air because i love my own experience and that's what life gave me but seriously emirates beat my airline in this area and that's why they won the crown <laughs> All right, next Monday, I'll be sharing with you a story time of how I actually got the job of a flight attendant and the behind the scenes experience that I went through. There was like hiding from my family, high drama, toxic life, whatever. <laughs> and it actually led me to the career of a flight attendant. So watch out for that video that's coming next Monday. If you are serious about starting your own flight attendant journey, check out my book, Ready for Takeoff, 
It is now available for shipping worldwide through my website, misskcris.com or Shopee slash kcris eh, slash kcris if you are from the Philippines. So there's my book here. Let me just show you a little bit. It's always on the background of my video. So this has been published 2018. And this is everything that I wished I knew before I started flying or applying for my flight attendant position as cabin crew. So I really drained my brain for everything that I wish I knew. And I put it here in a small handy dandy book. And this book knows the fundamental truth why others get the job and why others do not <laughs> it's all about preparation spoiler alert it's here on the book i have written down the eight proven steps or eight proven preparations that you have to prepare for when you are pursuing a dream job like being a flight attendant so this is what worked for me and all my clients that i have coached on my one-on-one -on -one coaching on my uh, in-person seminars in my master class this is what I always refer to and this is what gives them that you know passing with flying colors vibe because you covered all the areas so don't leave your dream job to chance get my book ready for takeoff available at misskcris.com and if you want more tips and tricks how to apply or get your dream job as a flight attendant i have created a playlist on this channel check out the video here that i will be posting here on the end screen and watch all the tips that you need i think i have talked all about the things that you need to know it's just here on my channel just search through the playlist what interests you and what topic you are struggling with right now it will be on the screen click it right now and i will see you on that next video thank you and i will fly with you soon bye